Hello everyone, welcome back once again to another fruitful discussion on our subject, science, technology, and society. We are now down to our next topic, which is when technology and humanity cross. But what does this statement really mean? Okay, so nowadays we can never deny the fact that scientific and technological progress has become one of the most important factors in the development of human society. In fact, the more progressive or the more developed your technology is, the more advanced your country is. And we cannot deny the fact also that nowadays it seems that we can no longer live without technology. And kumbaga sa panahon natin ngayon, kaakibat na ng buhay natin ang technology, ang hirap ng mabuhay ng walang technology. I'm pretty sure that if you'll be asked no, or to go back in the past wherein uh, you can... Uh, uh, na pwede kang matulog ng walang aircon, walang electric fan, or nang wala yung mga gadgets na meron ka, I'm pretty sure na pwede pa rin naman, no? But para sa atin, na naabot yung generation na to that we are experiencing a lot of advanced technologies, I'm pretty sure na talagang magkakaroon na pagbabago sa buhay natin. Now, but, you know, while scientific and technological developments provide ever-increasing opportunities, to better the conditions of life of peoples, ng buhay natin, and of course our countries, um, there can also you now this this advancement in technology, uh, this advancement in technology, in technology and science can also give rise to social problems. Like ano ba to mga problems na to? It could become a threat. Uh, in the side of humanity. You know, uh, as we all know, uh, there are several uh, fundamental and human rights uh, that is violated because of technology and science. Um, one, one factor there is the, the problems or the ever-increasing problems with uh, cloning, uh, the products like GMOs, uh, the use of other advanced technology in producing life, etc. So this concern in scientific and technological advancements or achievements can be used to intensify what? The arms race, suppress national liberation movements, and deprive individuals and peoples of their human rights and fundamental freedom. So this advancement in technology has two points. I always say that everything in this world right now has two sides. No, we have the good and the bad. And just like technology and science has good side, it also has the bad side. And sabi ko nga kanina, it could, uh, the, the technology or science itself can be used to intensify arms first. Ano bibig sabihin nun? Uh, as we all know, yung war ngayon talagang mas lalong nakakatakot because of the advanced weapons na ginagamit nila. Imagine ninyo, isang bagsak lang ng nuclear weapon can annihilate no? not only an entire country but even an entire continent. So ganun nakatindi. And just like yung pananakot na ginagawa or yung ginagawa ng North Korea ngayon na nagpapalipad sa mga missiles, it's actually creating no? uh, a lot of tension sa mga bansa. So that's an example of the bad side of technology. Another one is that it could be used to suppress national liberation movements. As we all know, because of social media, no, marami tayong mga fake news na pumakalat, siraan mo lang ang isang tao or isang politician, or magpakalat ka lang ng fake news, agad-agad ito magiging viral. And that is causing suppression in the national liberation movements, not only in our country, but in every country. And as I've said earlier, it could also deprive individuals and peoples of human rights. So we'll be learning more about this as we move on. Okay? It is with concern then that scientific and technological achievements can entail dangers uh, for the civil and political rights of the individual or group and for human dignity. So this is the reason why we are studying this topic when technology and humanity cross. Okay, now if you look at this slide, you'll see that human rights-based approach to science, technology, and development was created. Particularly, this uh, particular phrase or, or quotation was taken at the article or at the lecture of S. Romy Mohergy, a senior lecturer at the Paris Institute of political studies in his article linking science and human rights facts and figures so why is there a human rights based approach to science technology and development 
please take note, a human rights-based approach means that all forms of discrimination in the realization of rights must be prohibited. Again, uulitin ko, a human rights-based approach means that all forms of discrimination in the realization of rights must be prohibited, prevented, and eliminated. So it also requires the prioritization of those in the most marginalized situations. Alam naman natin, no, the more na mas nagiging powerful, the more na mas nagiging advanced na technology ng isang bansa, the more na mas madali nilang ibully or the more na mas madali nilang kubaga sakupin at wasakin ng isang lugar, tao, etc. Just like what you know, China is doing to us right now in our country. We all know that China has advanced weaponry. Kaya mas madali sa kanila na ibuli yung ating mga farmer or mga fishermen, I should say. And that's a typical example. No, so there should be no a human rights based approach. Kumbaga, this will define what is right and wrong in the usage of science and technology. And uh, as I've mentioned earlier, it requires, no, this human rights-based approach requires the prioritization of those in the most marginalized situations who face the biggest barriers that re uh, to realizing their rights. Now, as you can see on the, the slide, I have highlighted that the human rights-based approach seeks to place a concern for human rights at the heart. So it is the central goal, or so it's, it's a priority, I should say. The central priority uh, of this approach is to seek, uh, uh, seeks to place a concern for human rights. No? Another one, it leads to better and more suitable outcomes by analyzing and addressing the inequalities discriminatory practices, and unjust power relations, which are often at the heart of development problems. So, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, kaakibat ng pag-advance no, ng science and technology is the realization that uh, all forms of discrimination must be prohibited, prevented, and eliminated. So, hindi naman pwede na ginagamit natin or ginagamit yung advanced technology and uh, science no, sa paninira ng buhay ng ibang tao or let's say sa pagwasak ng buhay ng isang tao o maging ng isang bansa. Remember, the main aim or goal of uh, science and technology is to what? Advance and improve our lives. It's not to destroy our lives. Now, uh, in the article of S. Romy Mukherjee, uh, in in this uh, particular lecture that he had, uh, he mentioned several key documents and principles. But before I move on to that, you know, I forgot to mention that uh, while we're having this discussion, I have prepared some questions for all of you, and I want you to answer this question, participate in answering this question, no? Para talaga nakikita natin if uh, you're understanding what we are lecturing right now. Now, I want you to answer this question based on what we have discussed so far. What do you think? are the threats of technology to humanity. Now, I would like you to write your answer sa ating comment section or sa comment box, and then I will be reading them one by one. And this will also serve as your recitation na. So again, what do you think are the threats of technology to humanity? Okay, I will give you some time to answer the question. Perhaps you can just pause the video, and then you can answer the question. Okay, moving on. Now, as I mentioned, McCurdy included in his article key documents and their principles that ensure the well-being of humans and human rights protection amidst science and technology development. Now, I will not be thoroughly or I will not be giving an in-depth discussion of each key document because on your worksheet, I have there an activity where you have to present along with your groupmates a presentation for each uh, key document. Now, I have already divided the class into group, and each group will be given a key document which, where, uh, which they will work 
uh, on. And then uh, you will be presenting your output on our next meeting. Okay, so again, for this, uh, for for the uh, for this particular discussion, ang ipapresent ko lang sa inyo is the key document and uh, let's say a summary or the gist. No, the most important things lang na kailangan yung makuha dun sa key documents. But as I've mentioned, you will be working with your group and you'll be presenting an output regarding this key document. So don't forget about that. Okay, let's start with the first document. It is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So this was included by McCurgy in his article. Now, ano ba yung sinasabi nitong uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948? Tandaan nyo lang, it focuses or it declares that human rights are universal. Pag sinabi ito universal, it is, accepted regard, it is accepted by everyone, applies to everyone, regardless of your color, regardless of your race, your religion, or your sex, your gender, etc. So it's universal. It applies to all. And therefore, it could be enjoyed by all people, no matter who they are or where they live. So yan lang yung pinaka-essence no, ng Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And it includes, take note, civil and political rights like the right to life, liberty, free speech, privacy, etc. Okay? So yan yung ating, uh, yan yung dapat ninyong matandaan or yung focus ninyo pag sinabi natin Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. Okay, next, another document is the UNESCO Recommendation on the Status of Scientific Researchers in 1979. Now, ano ba tong, uh, kubaga, ano ba tong nasa, ano ba yung pinakalayunin no, ng, ng document na to? Now, it is an important document which sets the standard. No, It's an important standard setting instrument which not only codifies the goals and value systems by which science operates but also emphasizes that this need to be supported and protected if science is to flourish okay again it is a standard setting instrument uh, that codifies goals and value systems and that this needs to be protected and supported if science is to flourish. So ang focus nito is more on the value systems, no? um, uh, giving value to life and things that are much more important. Okay. Another one is the UNESCO Declaration on the Use of Scientific Knowledge in 1999. Ano ba yung pinaka central aim or goal ng ng document na to. It is uh, its commitment to the responsible and ethical use of scientific knowledge in addressing the great challenges facing humankind. So dapat ang science and technology ay ginagamit para solusyonan no yung mga problema natin no sa panahon natin ngayon. Some important problems and issues like climate change, overpopulation, uh, scarcity of food, no problems in agriculture. Uh, yung, yung sa health and wellness, no healthcare problems, etc. So napakarami nating problema at yun dapat ang ina-address ng science and technology. And that's why the UNESCO Declaration on the Use of Scientific Knowledge in 1999 was birthday. Okay? Next, we have the International Covenant on Economic and Social, uh, Social and Cultural Rights. Ano ba ang focus nito? It ensures the enjoyment okay, of economic social and cultural rights, including the rights to education. So, napaka-importante ng education because it's the great equalizer. Okay? And without education, no, um, kumbaga hindi aangat ang kahit na sino maging isang bansa. The more people are educated, the more na nagkakaroon ng improvement no, sa ating bansa. So, that's why the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights no, ensure the enjoyment of these rights, particularly the right to education. Now, let's proceed to the next one, the Declaration on Social Progress and Development. Ano ba ang focus nito? It focuses on means to ensure that social progress and development recognizes and protects human dignity. So, importante no, na maprotektahan ang dignidad ng bawat tao. This, especially, the more na nagkakaroon ng progress, the more na dapat nire-respeto natin ng buhay ng isang tao, and the more that we give importance to life. No, hindi, tandaan nyo, I've always, I, I, keep, I kept on emphasizing this, na hindi dapat natin ginagamit ang advanced science and technology para wasakin ang buhay ng ibang tao ng isang bansa. And just like, look, uh, look at what happened to Ukraine, no? Yung sa... Uh, gyera doon. Ang daming buhay ang nasira, ang daming mga kabuhayan ang nawala, 
and kawawa yung mga bata. So, we have to put premium no, sa buhay ng isang tao, sa dignidad ng buhay ng isang tao. Okay? Now, next one is the declaration on the use of scientific and technological progress in the interest of peace and for the benefit of mankind. So as you can see, the Janima keywords the title palang niya, the focus is on peace and the benefit of mankind. So that's why this key document or principle ensures that the results of scientific and technological developments are used in the interest of strengthening international peace and security, freedom and independence, and also for the purpose of the economic and social development of people. Again, ang interest should be on strengthening international peace and security, freedom and independence. Okay? Next one tayo, the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights. Ano ba ang pinaka-focus nitong declaration na to? It addresses ethical issues related to medicine, life sciences, and associated technologies as applied to human beings, taking into account their social, legal, and environmental dimension. So, uh, ang simply, ang focus nito is that uh, this medicines or this uh, new technologies related to preserving life or to curing several diseases should be no, uh, applied to human and uh, Kubaga na doon yung maximum uh, quality and it should aim to improve the life of people. Hindi para sira ng buhay ng tao. You know, I, in relation to this, I think I have mentioned this to the class already. Uh, I've read several articles and researches about uh, medical laboratory force. Okay, uh, lab, medical laboratory four. No, yung four yung level nila, and these are scattered sa mga. Uh, advanced countries wherein uh, they found out na may mga dinedevelop still ng mga viruses, mga dinedevelop sila ng mga strain, ng mga iba't ibang klase ng mga sakit that are really harmful. And in fact, there are certain documents saying na ang anthrax, ang SARS-CoV-2, and even no, even COVID-19 was laboratory made. So I hope na hindi totoo yung mga documents na yun. Uh, but you know, Hindi dapat ginagawa no na ginipig ang mga tao just for the sake of you know the personal gains of those wealthy people or those who are trying to control no yung buhay ng isang tao kasi even yung development ng let's say nung nung ating uh, uh nung mga medicines na ginagamit ngayon sa COVID-19 yung mga vaccines Alam nyo, malaking business yan at malaki talaga ang kita nila dyan. Hindi naman pinamimigay ang mga vaccines. They were created and developed in the laboratory and millions ang kinikita nila dyan. So imagine nyo, in some articles I've read, it says there na they really created the virus no para kumita yung mga laboratories na yon. And I hope, no, wag, wag nilang, I hope it's not true. I, I don't, uh, ando pa rin yung denial sa akin when I've read that and I'm hoping na uh, nandun pa rin yung humanity, yung humane, uh, humaneness, yung humanity, nandun pa rin sa, sa, sa mga taong yun. And isipin nila yung makakabuti sa mga tao. Why would you create such virus? And look at the impact. If ever natutuman yun, imagine yung buong mundo ang nagsuffer. And sinasabi ko nga, no, yung mga napapanood natin ng na mga movies, like yung mga zombie movies, there are also articles na nabasa ko that those are, those are, uh, kumbaga, those are intentions of those who are powerful and wealthy to prepare our minds to what is coming in the future. Kumbaga, pinipipi na daw tayo sa mga parating. Imagine ninyo, uh, kung totoo man na gano'n ang sitwasyon at uh, imagine nyo in just uh, a snap of a finger, maglagay lang sila, maglilis lang sila ng isang virus sa air just like in COVID-19 or pwedeng mag-drop lang sila ng virus sa tubig na iniinom natin and we could all turn out into zombies. And that is not impossible. Kung yung COVID-19 nga nangyari, how much more pa yung mga ganoon and nakakatakot and that is why this universal declaration on bioethics and human rights is really really important in preserving uh ethical issues related to medicine life sciences and technologies okay next we have the declaration of the car and the batong declaration of the car ang focus nito is a broad based strategy for ensuring that the basic learning needs of every child youth and adult are met within a generation and sustained thereafter. So yan ang pinaka-focus ng Declaration of the Car. And I think this is the last one of all the declaration, the Cairo Declaration. 
wherein it states here that all men are equal in terms of human dignity and basic obligations and responsibilities without any discrimination on the basis of race, color, language, belief, sex, religion, political affiliation, social status, or other considerations. In short, all men are equal regardless, okay? Regardless, and that is the Cairo Declaration. Okay, so now we're done discussing the article of Mukherjee. Now, we'll, we'll be moving forward naman sa humans and robots. Now, I think you already have an idea what's the meaning of computerization. Now, from the word, root word computer, no? as defined by Cambridge.org, computerization is a process of starting to use computer to do something that was done by people or other machines before. Computerization is slowly but surely taking hold of every aspect of not only business, but in all aspects of our life, education, healthcare, ano pa, uh, work, uh, employment, travel, tourism, lahat na, no? everything is now becoming computerized. So, uh, malaki ang impact no, ng computer sa buhay natin lahat. And just like what we're doing now, if there's no computer, hindi tayo makakapag, hindi kayo makakapag-aral ng ganito, hindi nyo ako mapapakinggan through a video. So it's really, really important. Computerization nowadays is really, really important. But just like what I've said, no, meron lagging ethical considerations into uh, uh, when using no, such technologies. Now, part of computerization is artificial intelligence and robotics. Now, uh, I was not able to write no, the, the question, but I would like to ask every one of you uh, who are listening right now, do you know the difference between artificial intelligence and robotics? If you do, please write your answer uh, on the comment box or the comment section. Okay, you can post this video and then you can encode or write your answer. Okay, before I move forward. Okay, so all your answers, I hindi ko man makita yung mga sagot ninyo, but I hope you were able to differentiate artificial intelligence and robotics. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, please take note, this is the system, okay, that emulates the human mind and to make decisions and learn. So ito yung kumbaga nag-ooperate, ito yung logarithms, ito yung mga uh, functions na encoded no, sa mga technologies that we have and even sa robots. So this is the brain, like the brain no, of the robots. So these are the systems that could emulate the human mind. And in fact, that's what they really need to work out. That's why we have artificial intelligence. They are trying to emulate no, the human mind. Whereas robotics involves the creation of robots to perform tasks without further intervention. So the uh, whole system, the whole logarithms, the whole mga uh, mga functions na ginawa nila ay uh, ilalagay nila sa robots at siya ang mag, uh, kumbaga magta-perform ng mga particular functions, algorithms, and tasks na yun. Now, most robots are designed to perform simple, repetitive tasks. There's no need for advanced AI as the duties are simple, predictable, and programmed. But nowadays, no, uh, they have actually created a lot of advanced robots with advanced AIs. Okay, let's see. I have here some examples of the top five world's most advanced AI systems no, in 2023. The first one is we have the Open AI or the Chat GPT. Biglang alam nyo, I, I don't know kung alam nyo to, pero uh, biglang sumabog no, itong uh, Chat GPT na to, particularly sa atin when a UP professor actually uh, noticed no, the answers of his students sa kanilang mga essays. And according to him, it was... Uh, AI generated. Now, ano ba tong open AI or chat GPT na to? Ang pinakatatandaan nyo lang dito is that uh, it's actually a very advanced artificial software uh, developed by open AI. At ano bang kayang gawin nito? It can demonstrate impressive performance on a wide range of language tasks. Ibig sabihin, uh, marami siyang language na kayang uh, gamitin. Okay? And including question and answering, summarization, and even writing. Go. Kaya nga, uh, naging question talaga dito sa atin, no? particularly sa nung nagkaroon nga ng, uh, nung nag-react nga or nagsalita nga yung isang UP professor, may mga thesis or may mga uh, output sa mga estudyante na talagang ginagawa sa chat GPT. And you know, I tried myself, I tried it myself and together with uh, a professor, 
No, tinry namin gamitin yung chat GPT and nung naglagay kami ng mga questions, talaga it turns out now, now ah, mas accurate na talaga yung mga binibigay niya ng sagot. And there are also instances na nagbibigay talaga siya ng mga sources, a uh, complete sources and, and I can say no, a very comprehensive answer to your to your question. So, imagine niyo, hindi ka na magse-search sa Google pa na, sa napakaraming link, ibibigay ng chat GPT yung sagot talaga na the best I answer I think no for for a particular question na hinahanap mo. So, this is actually very advanced as we uh, as we can see, no? And, and in fact, it is the first one, so most advanced AI systems in the world. Uh, from chat GPT-3, now we have chat GPT-3-4 na. Okay, next, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo earlier about alleged use of AI to complete students' final essays. So this was uh, an article or, or this actually sparked at University of the Philippines. So makikita nyo dyan sa slide na present ko yung uh, opinion or yung sinabi ng UP professor. So regardless of uh, reasons, ako din ay against no, sa paggamit ng chat GPT or whatever software, uh, even simple uh, Google man lang yan just to copy paste or answer, that's entirely wrong. No? Maling mali yan. Kaya nga, uh, you know, kapag tinolerate kasi natin yung mga ganitong classing activity wherein you're just going to copy paste and search for answers immediately lalabas yan it would come out no at nandiyan yan available on the internet however the problem is meron ba talagang learning na nangyayari meron ba talagang uh, embedded no na learning uh, na nangyayari and ang masaklap noon pag nagcopy paste sa mga students pag nagcopy paste kayo wala na kayong natutunan kasi i doubt if you will even read that no kaya uh, let's well well we can use technology we can use technologies like this no to search for answers to look for answers but please no uh, make sure na binabasa niyo siya and make sure na pinag-aaralan niyo make, make sure na tinecheck din niyo kung tama ba talaga yung sinasabi sa computer or sinasabi nung sa source niyo kasi not all ay tama at totoo and of course you know even though may readily made answers na dyan or may readily uh, may ready na answer na dyan I hope you'll still make an effort to um, kubaga, not just paraphrase it but try to read it and just uh, include in your output the things that you have understood no, sa mga binasa ninyo and, and that is actually much more beneficial so kubaga, ginagamit mo yung available na internet para matuto ka but at the same time you generate you think, you develop critical thinking by analyzing no the answers available so sana ganun ang gawin ninyo okay next uh, most advanced ai is the ibm watson ano bang kayang gawin nito it is equipped with advanced nlp algorithms it uses machine learning algorithms that uh, which allows uh, a certain individual to uh, kumbaga i-examine niya yung past mo kumbaga aaralin niya yung past and then magbibigay siya ng data for a much more improved uh, behavior or action for the future. So imagine niyo yung ma-analyze yung past and then magbibigay siya ng mga suggestions for future undertakings mo. So that's really advanced. Then we have uh, being on top of the AI tools. The system includes powerful data visualization tools. And another one is that it includes, or, or Watson now is referred to as cognitive computing system. In fact, I've watched a, a Jeopardy game where in IBM Watson, uh, participated. Try nyo isearch yon. IBM Watson Jeopardy game. If you're familiar with the, the game Jeopardy, no, tinalo ni IBM Watson yung mga kalaban niya and, and I'm pretty sure those are brilliant men na kalaban niya and um, sabi nga doon sa title nung napanood ko sa YouTube is that uh, talagang kubaga nilang paso no, ni IBM Watson. So, imagine yun, no, mas tumatalino nga ba ang mga ang mga artificial intelligence din develop ng tao kaysa sa tao mismo. So, uh, we'll see in the future. And uh, this actually poses a lot of debates no, sa maraming mga tao. Okay, next one is the Google DeepMind AlphaGo. Uh, itong Google DeepMind AlphaGo, ang masasabi ko lang dito is that tinalo ng Google DeepMind yung 2016 World Champion Lee Sedol in a best of five match sa uh, sa game na go. 
No, it's actually a very difficult game kasi kailangan mo talaga mag-isip. Pero imagine nyo, tinalo na, ni Google DeepMind yung world champion last 2016. So this talks a lot no, sa kayang gawin ng Google DeepMind. And of course, we have here Sophia uh, by Hanson Robotics. Uh, I will be talking more about Sophia in a while. So let's just skip her. And we'll be moving on sa last one, yung Tesla Autopilot. Alam nyo, nakakamangha itong Tesla Autopilot na to because, uh, as you can see on the screen, no, uh, not only can it detect accidents with around 90 to 95% accuracy, uh, reducing accidents significantly, it is actually autopilot. It can automatically steer, accelerate, and brake. So you don't need to do anything. You'll just be sitting down. And does, and perhaps may input kang location kung saan ka man pupunta. Or, uh, I mean, wala kang gagawin. Nakaupo ka lang talaga. And then, si Tesla Autopilot, yung car na yun mismo, ang magmamaneuver ng car kung saan ka man pupunta. However, if you look at the percentage, yes, mataas. No, yung 90 to 95% na accuracy, which actually prevents and detects accidents. However, I would like to emphasize that there is still an error na 5%, na te, 5 to 10%. So that 5 to 10% is still no dangerous. No, kahit na pa minimal niyan, one error palang or uh, a simple error or imagine yung may mangyaring masama doon sa 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 machine na yun or sa technology na yun, then it could even cost your life. But still, no, but still, imagine nyo tong advanced technology na to, where ang gagawin mo lang, uupo ka lang, and then the car itself will drive for you. That's amazing, isn't it? Okay? Now, this time, we'll be moving on to the top advanced humanoid robots in the world. And I tell you, nung pinapanood ko talaga to, uh, I'm sorry, pero kung may mga developers man or kung sino mang makapanood nito, but I'm just relaying what's uh, in my heart, no, this is just my opinion. Ang creepy talaga. At uh, nakakatakot sila tignan. And imagine nyo noon, napapanood lang natin sa mga movies ito, like yung Terminator. But now, we're, it's actually getting close. Ito yung, mga, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na yung pinaprepare tayo, we are being brainwashed by the by the things that we watch, the movies that we watch, the series that we watch, that to prepare us for the future. This is the perfect example for that. Because it's happening really today. Okay, the first one, the most advanced robot is of course Sophia. Now, in fact, I have here. I have here a video, but maybe I have a copyright issue. Ako. So, what I'm doing is that I'm going to discuss Sophia, but I have uh, attached the link. No, sa uh, my description below ng title ng aking video. So, panoorin nyo na lang. I-click nyo na lang yung mga links doon and then you can watch it on your own. Okay? And please do watch it because I have a question after you watch those videos later on. Okay? Now, so Sophia is actually considered to be the first robot. Tandaan niya, the first robot na ang alam ko meron siyang ano. Ayan, the first robot citizen. Imagine yo, he as she was the first, okay, to have a robot citizen and the United Nations Development Program's first robot innovation ambassador. So, isa na siyang ambassador. No, imagine yo. Now, she also appeared in several shows like Tonight Show, Good Morning Britain, and doon siya talaga nakikipag-converse naturally. She can answer questions, she can create facial expressions right now. Uh, and she is very eloquent no, in answering those questions. So please do watch the link. Okay, Do watch the video, the video using the link I have attached. Okay, Next we have uh, next we have yeah. Hi Sophia, how are you? Hi there. Every next we have Atlas okay, by Boston Dynamics. Now, ang, ka ang, ka ang kaibahan naman ni Atlas kay Sophia is that si Atlas kaya niyang mag Tumbling, kaya niyang tumalon, kaya niyang tumakbo, kaya niyang magbuhat na magbigat na bagay. Uh, he can do so many things. In fact, no, he can do carpentry. He can carry, uh, sabi ko nga, mabibigat na objects. So, uh, nakaka-amaze na nakabuo na sila ng ganitong crossing robot. Although Atlas is not talking, pero yung kanyang uh, locomotion ay talagang advanced. Very advanced. Kaya niyang Ah uh, para nga siyang merong if you watch the video na inattach ko sa inyo makikita niyo na para siyang nagpa-perform ng isang 
ano bang tawag doon? Uh, para siyang may nagpapakitang gilas, no? Uh, makikita niyo Atlas will carry a heavy object there. He, he will run, he will jump, and he will do so many things. So please do watch it. So uh, as you can see on the ranking, Atlas is the second most advanced robot. Okay. Now, if you're hearing my background noise right now, I'm very sorry. Um, may atang activity or concert somewhere close near or nearby sa akin. So please, uh, pag pagjagaan yun na lang muna yung tulog na yun, Okay. Now. Uh, other than identifying obstacles in the in the path, sabi dyan, it uh, Atlas can also avoid them. So he, he can identify perhaps through the sensors na meron siya. No, he can identify or avoid yung mga obstacles sa dadaanan niya. He can bounce. He can do somersaults. Magtumbling. Kaya niyang gawin yun. Okay? And his uh, body movements is actually similar to gymnasts. So imagine nyo baka later on, hindi na mga tao ang nagkukompete sa gymnastics. Baka mga robot na. Okay? And nakaka, ano yun, na, kumbaga, nakakatakot naman isipin na gano'n. Okay. So, dun sa link, just a taste of it. So, ah, I got my see, tools again. May parang kunyaring karpintero. And then, you see Atlas below. Okay, so, to see more, please watch the video through the link. Okay, next we have Ameca. Ameca is actually the world's most advanced, uh, most realistic humanoid robot. Kakita nyo, dito ako parang kinilabutan talaga nung pinanood ko to kasi meron siyang mga facial expressions na ginagawa na ang creepy talaga. And uh, although his, she's trying to mimic no, yung facial expression natin na human beings, pero... Uh, Looking at it, um, ang creepy pa rin para sa akin. Okay, so again, Ameka is the world's most advanced, most realistic humanoid robot. Okay. Ameka, Next, I want to... Uh, we have Nadine. Si Nadine naman, ito nakaka, ano, parang nakaka-amaze at some point kasi uh, she can actually create conversations, uh, of course, like a human, with personality, mood, and emotions. And um, para siyang, ano, nagbibigay ng mga, how do I say this? Uh, para siyang counselor. No? Nagbibigay siya ng mga greetings, nagbibigay siya ng mga comments, nagbibigay siya ng uh, answers, uh, regardless, uh, regarding dun sa mga concerns mo. So she's like a, uh, kubaga, a, uh, a robot that could give guidance okay or counseling and he could speak or she could speak in several languages as well okay now panorin nyo na lang yan and the last one here is asimo asimo is actually one of the most advanced uh step in innovative mobility created by honda actually ang gumawa nito ay honda okay so uh he can actually interact also with humans he can also create sounds he can also create or do a lot of things just like the other robots that I mentioned kanina. Now, last part uh, before I end is, you know, uh, we cannot deny the fact na papunta na tayo doon sa era wherein robots and AIs are almost or will become a part of our life. And in fact, sabi sa... Uh, sabi sa isang article na nabasa ko sa Ford magazine, Forbes magazine, ay robots and artificial intelligence are expected to permit our daily lives by 2025. Ilang taon na lang ba yun? Two years from now. No? mag a na ang mga robots and AI sa buhay daw natin. And according to Pew Research, about half or 48% of expert surveys felt that robots and digital agents will displace a significant number of blue and white collar jobs. Their concern is that this will increase income inequality and create a mass of virtually unemployed people. Now, here's my question. Will robots actually replace people? Again, the question is, will robots actually replace people? Now, please answer this question. You can pause the video and answer the question on the comment section. Okay, moving on. I, I imagine or I... I I'm thinking na nasagutan na ninyo yung tanong na yon. The reason why I ask that is because if you look at the picture on the on the left as you're looking at the screen, you see that there's a man, a Japanese man who actually married a a hologram, no, an AI doll. And uh, totoong married 
married marriage to ah uh, meron silang marriage marriage certificate at nagsasama sila kaya lang kaya lang if you would imagine no um kaya ba talagang palitan ng ng robot ang mga tao particularly sa pagig sa ganitong uh, situation na sa na, na mag aasawa ka and remember the purpose of marriage is to continue life no it's a sacred part of our life that continues our life no and uh, that's the time you'll have your children you'll be uh, raising up a family so imagine niyo na defeat for me eh? na defeat yung purpose ng pagkakaroon ng family but you know even the definition of family nowadays because of the advancement of science and technology is actually evolving so we can no longer no uh put up in a box yung definition ng family kubaga hindi na lang iisang definition ng family sa panahon natin ngayon but nonetheless no um i would like to hear more about your sentiments about this particular issue or particular article uh in relation to the question will robots actually replace people okay so now i've mentioned you can also watch this video no sa sa internet or sa YouTube. Ayan, tinan nyo yung actual wedding niya. Ayan, mismo yung nangyari. At nagbigay din siya ng message niya. So, ko lang ma-imagine. No? Uh, by the way, yung tao na yun, you cannot simply tell me na baka nasisiraan siya ng bait or whatsoever. Please take note, he is a renowned university professor. At napakatalino niya. And in fact, may kaya siya. Okay? So, anyway, I, I'll leave that to you when we see each other face to face. I'll be asking. I'll be asking you more about that. Now, earlier I've mentioned that meron kayong activity na gagawin with your group. So please uh, look at your worksheet. Nilagay ko naman itong part na to sa worksheet niyo. So thank you very much for listening, and that would be all. I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye bye.